at first glance, this looks like a really, really cool collection of things to use to make a junk journal. But if you know, you know. <laughs> Welcome, it's Luisa Heinzel. And I'm laughing so much today because you are just so amazing and so funny. What is this and what are we going to do with this? I have put a journal into my washing machine because because I wanted to know what is going to happen if I put a journal into my washing machine. This is what I had left over <laughs> because all of the pages and the whole, nearly the whole journal died and everything disappeared. If you have missed the video where I did that, I will put the link down below in the description box. The other thing that I had left over from that experiment is this here. This is the string where I had wrapped my journal with into a towel to make sure <laughs> that everything stays in place while it's in my washing machine. And before I do anything else and explain what the rest is, thank you so, so much for making my whole day, my whole week, my whole month. I don't know what I can say to express what you have done for me. Your comments below the washing machine video are just so, so funny. And you are just the best community in this world. In the morning, um, I, I mean, when I record this, it's um, the Monday after Sunday where you have seen the video and I have read the comments that you have left below the video. And it's just, you know, the moment after I have published the video and you are just so, so funny. Your comments really cracked me up and I'm sure they will crack me up in the future as well because you are not stopping commenting below that video. Thank you so, so much. I think one of the most important things about junk journaling is that you have fun and that you have to do something where you can be sure to have fun yeah that's the main point even if you don't see yourself as an artist or even if you think oh i'm new to junk journaling i don't know all of the techniques yet blah 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 forget it the most important thing is to have fun and i think we've reached this thing with the video with the washing machine and your reaction to that and that is just such an i want to make a red cross in my calendar for this day because it's just so amazing so thank you so much for that but now let's go into this so <clears throat> from the washing machine experiment i have this left over and from the second round of this experiment where i have put a second journal into a pot and then I have put that to my stove to cook it. I have this. The pages of this, and there's a video of this as well. So am I holding this in the right direction? Yeah, this is the front. Um, there's also um, two videos about this second experiment. I have put the journal into um, a pot with boiling water, vinegar, alum, some coffee and turmeric. And then I have cooked the journal. And as you can see, this is now totally dry. And of course, I have shown you my process in the other videos and I've also shown you the wet pages and the reveal of the pages. And now they are totally dry. It took a while. I have um, first um, dried that a little bit with my uh, heat gun. And then later on, I have put that over my gas heater. So it was hanging in the air. I have made a little construction so that it could hang like so so i've just clamped it here and here and then mm, you can't see that now Whew, i'm so sorry then the pages were separated a little bit like this so that the heat could go in there really well and now it's completely dry and i'm totally thrilled about how these pages look uh i mean i was like freaking out in the other video and i'm still in this freaking out modus because <laughs> no it's not modus it's mode freaking out mode i think that is you know, I think you understand what I mean. Um, and this is just so, so amazing. Ha. Okay, so we have this. And we have, of course, both of these cover pieces here. So these are the pieces which originally had been glued here, like so, and here, like this. And they came off 
in my pot when I cooked the journal because they were glued and I had no sewing here so th these came off um, but we have them here now that is good and uh, what I also have is this these are these like little end papers which originally have been here so one was like so here I guess yes must be like this and that was here from the original book cover um, I had used to make the journal and then this whole thing was here like so and when it was wet this came off and then I could remove this from this so that I now have all of these pieces um, separately and I think that is good because then we can decide what we want to do with them and how we want to assemble them back together because that is the plan I want to have a journal in the end from all of these pieces here so we have that um, another thing that we have is a little fabric and lace and stuff so this is the fabric I've used to wrap the journal in when I have put it into my pot for cooking I have used this lace to wrap the journal into the uh, to tie this around I mean this was tied around this and in here there was the journal you know so that we have this cool lace as well which has now the perfect color for this project of course these are the doilies let me put them perhaps here so that you can see that better these are the doilies I've used to put into the journal to make some patterns and they turned out really nice as well they got really cool colors and I also like the oxidation on here that is something yeah not so usual I would say something a little different and I like that and of course these now fit to the rest as well really really well and then we also have, um, from the washing machine experiment, we have these little papers left over. These are some coffee filters. So this is the only paper that survived from the washing machine experiment. And by the way, so many of you have asked if the washing machine itself has survived. With the washing machine, everything is fine, yeah? I won't try this experiment at home again. <laughs> and, you know, I have to use a public washing machine here on the campsite. But with the washing washing machine, everything is fine, yeah? It survived. <laughs> and it is clean again, and we can use it again. Uh, yeah, so then we have all of these amazing die cuts here, which we've also used to put in between of the pages, the wildflower die cuts from the first experiment uh, didn't survive. <laughs> that's not the problem. We have all of these. And the plan is now... <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have a plan. I want to take these pieces here from the cover. And I want to um, put that back here somehow. But there's a little problem. I will tell you about the problem in a second. And... I told you that I wanted to um, have this here later on as well shown because these are the strings where originally my signatures have been sewn in before I put the thing into the washing machine and this has survived completely and I really like this. This is so cool and it's so sturdy and it's, yeah, you know, why, why can't we use this for something? And I thought perhaps we can put this here somehow onto this to make something like a closure thingy like so somehow and then this is nice do you know what I mean <laughs> so that is the plan and I want to walk you through my process here today I have no idea if this is then in the end beautiful and you know nice <laughs> I have no idea but I want to show you how I try to do this so the first problem is the thing with these covers with these cover pieces this was the back and it's just totally fine it's a little bit like wonky can you see that but the main thing is intact and it's okay to use and i have no problems with using it the problem is here that the paper is a little loose the backdrop i have glued to the book cover piece comes off a little bit and here are those squishy spots and i don't know if this is going to be sturdy or if we have to do something with that to make sure that this can't tear with the time when we use the journal later this is relatively dangerous but the bigger problem is this piece I mean at first glance it looks like both are okay but this from the front of the cover 
has this problem. It has a little thing which I can't get flat. So what I want to do is I want to cut a circle out from here, hoping that this problem then is solved. I don't want to have a perfect circle. I think that's also not possible with hand cutting it, but I just want to make this a tiny little bit nicer. And do you know what? Oh, I'm just thinking. This button is brown, isn't it? And I'm still waiting for my scorched timber package to arrive. This would be so cool if I could ink these edges with the new Distress Color Scorched Timber. Ah. And it says that it shall arrive today. What time is it? 10, 48, uh, quarter to 11. I have to check my, my FedEx app before I go on because that would just be so it would be just perfect let's check it's so crazy now it says oh I I'm so angry now it says 12 12 30 instead of 12 10 I mean that's 20 minutes difference yeah but it's constantly changing and Virgil that's the town where it obviously is now it's not so far away from here okay so let's hope for the best that the package is going to arrive within this time period of recording this video that would be just so amazing and I think this would be amazing as well look how cool this is So I want to try to seal the surfaces of both of these pieces now to be able to have something that makes this problem sturdier so that this can't tear anymore. The problem is the turmeric is probably going to smear if I apply something on here with a paintbrush. So I want to try to first spray this fixative onto both of the pieces so that I then later on can add some hard coat Mod Podge, hopefully without smearing the turmeric. Since it's not a good idea to dry this with your heat gun, Let's put these aside and let's think about some things we could do with the die cuts um, that probably also has to dry because I mean I can't go on with the cover now because you know drying time uh, but I think this worked relatively well I can't see any smearing so um, I think it's it's really fine and I'm thinking about adding some mediums I'm just thinking about what I want to add because mm, for example here on this side of the butterfly there's also some distress spray stain here is oxide spray and with drying this whole thing this got relatively subtle compared to when it was wet if I add a translucent paste here now for example translucent texture paste or something like crackle paste or crackle paint translucent then the color gets more intense and I'm thinking if I can then have this really intense and this like this oxidized subtle color we could also save some time and emboss portions of this with clear embossing powder that is also then perhaps easier to apply
And now a tiny little bit of scorched timber here to distress the edges. That would be just so amazing. In Zustellung, in Zustellung, in Zustellung. Oh. They look just so, so amazing. This is dry. This feels like leather now. It's really sturdy, way sturdier than before. We can still feel this squishiness, but I think that's okay. <laughs> I also think, what if I, what if I just sew a little bit over here? <laughs> it's completely flat. It's completely sturdy. I'm absolutely amazed. Wie soll man was benutzen, wenn man es nicht hat? Und wie soll man darüber hinwegkommen, dass es geil gewesen wäre, das zu benutzen? Halleluja. Also langsam geht mir dieses Spielchen echt auf die Eierstöcke. You won't believe it. You just won't believe it. I had some lunch. And while I was sitting there eating, um, I said, well... I could just use some ground espresso for my project here or some forest moss, but that just wouldn't be the same. And I'm assuming because, you know, scorched timber would be definitely the better color. And I had it already in my head how it would look on, on my project here. Yeah? And that is... <sighs> and then I said, it will happen that I come back to my craft desk after having, having lunch and then I spritz ground espresso or I distress um, ink with ground espresso and then FedEx will tell me, I mean, after I finished what I wanted to do with another color, then FedEx will probably tell me that my package is now delivered. When I said that, I didn't know that it can come even worse. And I'm so angry. You can't believe that. I'm, I'm just so angry. Because when I came back here to the desk and, you know, wanted to try to decide what I want to do, I looked to my FedEx app and there it said that they have tried to deliver it, but nobody was there. And that is definitely a lie, FedEx, because the woman from the reception was there. The man in the restaurant was there. Everything, I mean, the doors are open. He he didn't didn't even had to ring the bell because every every door in the building is open. You can just go in and please take the package and just deliver it. Can't be so hard. It can't. It, it just can't be so hard. So and then the 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 most crazy thing is that they have written in the app that they will return it to the sender now and I've tried to contact FedEx but all of the possibilities to contact FedEx are not working they are having excuses for you know a technical issue here a technical issues there please try it later uh, yeah later when when the heck is later I mean, you know, Ranger paid, has paid um, the shipping and I want to do projects with scorched timber and I want to fulfill my, 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 uh, you know, what I have to do. And of course, I mean, it's not only that I want to do it. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I would love to have this here on my project, but I'm also angry because I have to do the things where I said, yes, I, I, I'm going to do it. And I already feel like, you know, a little bit weird because I'm the last person, obviously, from Tim's uh, maker team who... <laughs> gets the color and I feel like you know like being late and that is not a good feeling really it's it's really not a good feeling and I feel so bad about that even if I know that it's not my fault and that I can't do anything but 
holy cow, why, why can't they just give me this package? Huh? So I have now decided that I want to do it a little bit differently and I'm sure it will look great again uh, as well. But please imagine <laughs> this was Scotch timber, even if it isn't. So I have put some forest moss and ground espresso oxiding around the edges here. Now I'm splattering some water and I'm trying to decide if I shall add some embossing glaze to make that even darker. But I don't know if I want that or not. Ah! If I want to have this here and the, the um, what is this? This button is relatively dark, isn't it? And this is too smooth compared to this. So, first of all. I have to attach this piece here to the journal exactly like it is here as well so that this and this is later on the same size and I want that this gets a pocket here that looks really good I want to have that Yeah, let's perhaps do it like this. So I will attach this lace somehow here. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Somehow here. Perhaps even like this, so that we see this frayed edge here as well. Yeah. And then I will attach this to this. Here we have this pocket now. <sighs> Okay, so then we can close this, put something inside that makes this journal thicker so that we then can decide better what to do next so that we can imagine how it would look when, you know, the journal got thicker. Okay, so that means since this is the same width than this, a little wider because my sewing is not so accurate here but since that is like so we can uh, and the journal will probably not get uh, get thicker than this is because otherwise it would look totally wonky and out of control so why don't we just take this and try to fold this in half. That is approximately what I already had before. Like this. And then this would go over here like so. Okay. Here we have a little pocket now. And from this side it looks like this. And I'm relatively happy with how this turned out. And now I can also see that I want, definitely want to have this flower here. Sometimes you have to do things and then later on decide if you really want to do what you thought before. Do you also have those situations? Sometimes I really can't imagine how something would look and then my my steps are totally chaotic. I mean mixed up. I want to cut a strip that then goes below this on here so instead of scorched timber i'm going to take um, some ground espresso spray stain and it it hurts a bit to say that but i have no other chance and i will probably always i mean in the future when i look at this journal think about this thing with scorched timber and that I alternatively have used ground espresso when I see this I can already see that I can't live with that because I will always see yeah a bad alternative to to the other color <laughs> so I'm going to use some forest moss spray stain to put that on here and I think that fits to the yellow of the cover really well and uh, we have used forest moss in the journal as well so this should fit um perhaps you can now see 
what my problem was with this frame here because this is definitely too light but that is not not the problem we can make that work and i'm oh my goodness this is just amazing and since many of you many 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 of you have written below the video with the washing machine that you have expected uh, that i use my hammer <laughs> i thought <clears throat> let's do it <laughs> so i will do the following thing i will hammer this and then i will put some embossing glaze in some areas here heat that up so that we can get a really dark effect also So then I'm going to take some walnut stain embossing glaze. That is the darkest, like, you know, brownish glaze I have. I'm going to take some water, make this wet, and then I'm going to emboss this with embossing glaze to make it really, really dark. If your embossing doesn't turn out dark enough, because I mean embossing glaze is translucent, isn't it? Then you can also apply the glaze with a colored medium. Yeah, like for example, spray stain. I've used some ground espresso spray stain for the other areas here to attach the powder. And I think that fits better to the color of the lace. And it's a little darker. And I think that is better. Okay, so then <clears throat> let's attach this little thing here just with a bread i want to secure this with a tiny little bit of hot glue to make sure that it really stays in place i'm going to cut this shorter so that it is not visible in the hole in the cover So then I can take this and go to my sewing machine and sew this on. Okay, so here we go. And it's like this. And for the back, I want to take this and I want to attach this butterfly here so that we have something interesting on the back as well and I want to attach the butterfly of course before I sew this piece to um, the green fabric because I thought perhaps I can just sew him on as well mm -hmm. just thinking I want to add a little piece of this thing here or perhaps even this, what we've just cut off there, as some kind of a tab. <sighs> so then we can make some decorative stitching here on the butterfly and at the same time with that attach it to the cover piece and then I am going to take this and sew that on here so that it is attached as well. So then it looks like this <laughs> and then we can <clears throat> take this piece, decide for the position and especially the length because <clears throat> I like this irregular look but mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I want to see yellow around here so I will cut that to the right size and then I will sew that on here as well. I have the feeling that this looks a little naked so I've just taken this little piece from my stash to put it here. I think that looks better. So I'm going to sew this button on now. Ah. 
Where is this little rusted label now? Okay, so I've just cut a piece of paper for this label here, which I now want to attach here, centered to the, the length of this. <clears throat> and then I want to staple into this little fold here just to make sure that it stays in place and because I think that staples look great here. This is the string I've used to tie around the journal which I've put into the washing machine. First I thought I want to attach that here around the button so that we can then use that as a closure. Is that nice? Why not? So I've just wrapped it around a few times so that we then can shorten it and then we can just tie the rest around here so that it's closed then. <laughs> what do you think about this irregular and rough look? I mean later if I if I decide that I don't like that I mean, I'm not the closure kind of junk journaler. I really hate closures. <laughs> but in this case, I think we need this. I'm not so sure what I will think about <clears throat> this in a few weeks or so. But the good thing is, I can always remove that and uh, put something else on there. I could even think about like a velcro dot here and here, for example, I mean below here, of course, um, so that I could close it in a totally different way. That would also be possible. But this is what we have now, and I really, really like this. Even if I'm not so sure about this, but I like that we could use so many things from those experiments to make this. And I'm just realizing that one of my ink pads is still in there. <laughs> I, you know, I have put that in there to imagine how this looks when there are embellishments on the pages and the journal gets a little bit more bulky. But I really like how this turned out. Look, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but I think that's a good trick to imagine how thick a journal could become. So then I would say that this is finished. We have this little pocket here now where we can put some ephemera in for example and I really like this because this you could now use for hanging some charms for example. Uh, you could f completely fill this with like tiny charms or <clears throat> other things. You could even tuck some tiny tags behind here or something. I really like that and I'm really happy about this. Even without scorched timber, I think this looks really nice. <laughs> and I think later I will also turn this little thing into a little pocket just by gluing it here so that I can then put something in here. And I also like that we have this pocket here and that feels it feels really nice. This fabric feels really nice. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That is it. So I'm hoping that you enjoyed this little series of extreme junk journal experiments. <laughs> and I'm hoping that your nerves are still intact. And of course, I'm hoping we will see the next time again. Have a very great and creative day. Bye bye.